What up, YouTube? Big Lou, Big Louise, Coach Review, back here with another review, and today we're here to do a little review on the Gorilla Tactic Merc. That's right, this is a brass mechanical tube mod measuring in at 27 millimeters in diameter and tapers down to a 25 millimeter right at the 510 connection. Uh, I'm rocking currently a Buddha version 2 brass at the top which measures in at 24 millimeters so there is a slight difference in widths from the rda to the mechanical tube mod i don't own many 25 millimeter rdas and i'm okay with that because i prefer the building space of a 24 millimeter RDA, especially this one with these big ass fucking screws on it that I could put monstrous 18 gauge coils on here or 20 gauge coils, wrap them parallel and just let them vape up like a monster, you know? Uh, VCM does create great mechanical tube mods as well as great RDAs. So if you wanna check out a really good company, check out VCM for the Buddha version two. It's a great RDA. Other than that, this mechanical tube mod that we're talking about today is the Gorilla Tactic USA mechanical tube mod. Now, this is called the Merc, and they also have an RDA, I think, is called the Shadow, but I could be wrong. It might be called the Raven or the Shadow. I don't know. I don't have it. It's a four-post RDA. Comes with an Ultum drip tip. It looks kind of cool but kind of generic I, I don't know i think it's just something to match the mechanical tube mod but i will say this this mechanical tube mod is nice there are some negatives that i find with this mechanical tube mod and this is just my honest opinion folks so i'm not out to bash a company other than the looks and feel of the mechanical tube mod you know as far as performance goes how does it perform well it does perform quite nicely it's got a silver Silver plated uh, copper contact down in the switch area. It does have a nice thick wall design on the switch housing. The feel of the button is just a little too soft for me. Okay, uh, I like a very restrictive throw on the button. This one's kind of mush, okay? We're gonna take apart the switch. We're gonna look at it up close. We're gonna take apart the mechanical tube mod, look at it up close. But just so you know and understand, this is a hybrid mechanical tube mod. So it does have direct contact from your RDA straight to your battery. So understand you must have an RDA with the elongated pin on the RDA, okay? You can't have a pin that's very short or submerged into your RDA, because then you're risking a short and that is no good, and then you're in a world of shit. No. So this mechanical tube mod was brought to my attention by a good friend of mine who owns a company but better known as Final Boss Vapes. Uh, they got a lot of good flavors in their e-liquid line that I love and enjoy and I use often. My current favorite from them is Nemesis. It's a pineapple upside down cheesecake type of flavor and it's just flawless and I just vape the hell out of that juice every chance I get. Um, in fact, I'm probably up for a refill soon so i'll probably hit them up soon for a refill but other than that good ass fucking uh liquid to, to be vaping in any kind of mechanical tube mod but he had sent me this mechanical tube mod with hopes of saying big glue give me your thoughts tell me what you really think you know he wants a straight up honest point of view and review on it so that's what you're going to be getting on this mechanical tube mod and that's all i gotta say so let's dive up close let's check it out let's see all the little bits and pieces of this mod and what makes it up and what are the cons and what are the pros and we'll go from there all right so here we have the packaging for the Merc mech mod from Gorilla Tactic USA uh, we have a yellow sticky here signifying that I have a brass edition uh, on the lid itself there is a Gorilla Tactics logo on the side there is nothing on this side, there is nothing. On the back side, there is a ghosted image of what, see, what says their web address. And on the underside, there's nothing. If we open it up, it shows us our mechanical mod sitting with a velvet uh, insert, basically. If you remove the mod from the packaging, 
There is nothing underneath this velvet sponge that's for the insert. Looking at the mechanical tube mod, it is very, very shiny, very high polished, and it is a sleeved mech mod. Looking at the lower portion of the mechanical tube mod, you'll see that we have our button and it is cut a certain way into the bottom switch area where it's not going to move left and right simply because it has this cog or gear type of uh, cut. And it's very, very smooth. It's very, very smooth when going in and out of the switch housing. So it's, it doesn't grab, it's not rough, it's not jagged. So it's very, very smooth. Looking at the button super up close to the switch, you'll notice that the button sits flush at certain points on the switch. But at certain other points, it seems to stick out just a hair, just slightly, very, very slightly, almost like a quarter of a millimeter pops out. Now, this doesn't drive me nuts, but for certain people out there, it might drive certain people crazy. So I'm not sure how people are going to react to that, but it's just a very, very minor, minor detail, basically. The threads are beautifully cut. There's some gunk here and there. Uh, you know what? I take it back. Not beautifully cut, but nicely cut. There's some, maybe it's dirt or it's just, I'm not sure. Could just be the way the brass is. I'm not actually sure. We have two holes for venting in the Delrin battery height adjuster. If you want to adjust it, just simply back it out. Once you remove the Delrin battery height adjuster, you'll see it has very, very fine threading on the inside. And then we have a silver plated copper contact exposed. You see there's just one point of contact based on the small amount of arcing at the dead center of my contact right there. Silver plating has a tendency to be very conductive, but at the same time it has a tendency to arc. Removing the contact, I simply just push my button in all the way and I carefully unthread the contact. So we have a male contact, silver plated copper. Nicely plated though. Very thick layer of plating, so that looks very nice. This is the top portion of the switch. You can see our button, dead center. Has a slight rub to the switch housing. Reveals a flat spring. Which I might actually just remove this spring and install my own kind of spring. I'll probably make spring out of like 16 gauge wire or something. So I'll make a coil and just stick it in there. Or maybe I'll just use two magnets to stiffen up the throw. Thread in my contact all the way. Now when you thread in your contact, just be mindful that there's threading in there. It may grab your fingertips. So just be careful when you put it back in, you don't cut yourself. There we go. That little snap just told me that it lined up correctly. That's with it all the way in. If you need to adjust it, just stick tweezers in those two holes and spin it counterclockwise to adjust for battery rattle. Now the sleeve is actually threaded into the tube. So if you back out your tubing, you'll notice 
there is threading, very fine threading at the very top portion right here. And it's such a high gloss polished brass. I mean, it's, it's very, very shiny. Looking down into the center of the 510 connection, you'll notice there is a slight ledge down there. There are dips down going towards the 510 connection. They do that for battery safety so your battery doesn't arc when there's no RDA in there. So this way you don't get any shorts of any kind. So it's a nice little feature to have at the 510 connection. When putting your sleeve back on, you wanna make sure you have the threaded portion of the sleeve facing the top 510 area, thread it on that way first. There is a lip between the sleeve and you really can't help the lip from happening because of the twist of these lines. So the sleeve is gonna be a little um, standing out further from the width of the 510 connection because of the twisting effect. Today's battery of choice, I'm using the Pegasus Vapor Academy 18650 1500 milliamp per hour very low density ultra high discharge of 30 amps this is the type e battery they have an assortment of batteries of different milliamp per hours and discharges so it starts as type a type b type c type d and then final with type e being the highest drain of them all now they have recommended usage as well so with when using two of these batteries in a regulated device, you can use it up to 150 to 225 watts in series. Uh, analog, meaning single 18650 usage for mechanical tube mods, they recommend a 0.15 ohm to 0 0.12 ohm being the lowest amount of resistance to use in a coil on a single battery. Uh, if you want to go lower and you have lower builds, they are recommending that you do uh, parallel usage to 0.07 to 0.06 in parallel battery formation. Meaning if you have it in a mechanical box mod, the positive ends are both, both facing in the same direction. Okay, Whether it's up or down, both positives are facing in the same direction to make it parallel. When it's in series, you have the positive going up one way and a positive on the other battery going the other way. And that would be in series formation. Threading is nice though. When you do spin on the threads, I mean, it goes on very easily. I mean, watch. Find the thread. I mean, it's just very smooth, very fast threads. We have a slight bevel at the top to accommodate 24 millimeter RDAs. So it gives it a little finish at the very top. We have battery venting at the top as well. And if you choose to have it the other way, it can vent with the micro space around the switch area. That little space between the, the switch housing and the button itself, air will pass through there. So most people say, dude, it has no venting on the bottom. Well, it does. It does vent around that. Under high pressure, it will escape. But in most cases, if you're going to have your positive facing the 510 connection, the gases will escape uh, much more rapid at a rapid pace through these vent holes at the top crown of the 510 connection. This mechanical tube bot is measuring in of a height of 89.49 millimeters tall. So I have 89.49 millimeters tall. At the top 510 connection, I'm getting a measurement of 27.04 five five millimeters so we're back so we checked it out up close you see how i feel you know all the good points and negative points that 
are going on with this mechanical tube mod. Overall, is it a great mechanical tube mod? Well, for 130 bucks, it's not that bad. Uh, I don't like the mushy spring or the mushy action that you have in the resistance of the button, but for some people out there, they don't like a very restrictive throw. This might be something up your alley. Plus the whole concept where if you want to remove the sleeve, it is threaded into the tube. And if you wanted to put other sleeves on here, you can. Uh, I actually have been enjoying this mechanical tube mod without the sleeve on it, believe it or not, because I like gripping it very low at the bottom and having a good grip. Uh, it actually, I think it kind of looks cool like this but it's just based on opinion. The only negative thing is you'll see the threads at the top portion of your tube, which it doesn't kind of work out too well. So it's really hit or miss, really, this mechanical tube mod. It's not my most favorite mechanical tube mod. Uh, I wish they had basically evened out the height of the twists, you know, to be level with the mod, so this way there's no lip at the top or the bottom of the mod. Uh, other than that, does it hit? Does it work well? Yes, it is very conductive. Yes, it does hit very well. Uh, you can switch up the sleeves. You can have an anodized aluminum. You can have an anodized uh, brass or copper, or you know, you could just have bare copper or bare brass or stainless or whatever. You can switch it up and make it fit more of your like preference on how you want it to look. Overall wise, with the twist look on it, it does look look really cool so it has the cool factor as far as looks go performance it does perform but is it my favorite no it's not my favorite mechanical tube mod and that's all i gotta say because i'm just being straight up with you guys if they tighten up the spring a little bit and alleviate the lip scenario at the top and bottom then i would be more geared to appreciating the mechanical tube mod more. And that's all I gotta say. So from me to YouTube, peace out. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here. Laters.